Hi everybody, Callan Bentley here. I'm down on the downtown walking mall in Charlottesville. I got my shopping bag. I'm ready to go spend my money at these fine establishments, but I'm getting distracted because there's lots and lots of really cool geology to be seen even here in the building stones. So let's take a look uh, at an example. This fountain over here is made out of an igneous rock. So this igneous rock has big, easily visible crystals. If you uh, zoom in on them here, they um, seem to be a mix of sort of dark and light. So we might think of this as a, uh, a diorite or maybe even approaching a gabbro. And there are also these areas like right here and right here where we have a finer grain texture and darker colored material. These are microgranular mafic enclaves. Um, they're like little blobs of insoluble, more mafic magma within a um, more intermediate magma chamber. So think about the blobs in a lava lamp. They don't really mix with the, the main liquid in the lava lamp. That's kind of like this. Um, so this is one example of an intrusive igneous rock. But if we turn around here, we're crossing 2nd Street, and we go over to this um, bank-looking building here, we can see we've got another one. And this one is a little bit coarser grain, so bigger crystals, which indicates probably a, a longer cooling time deep underground. And we can see a much lighter color. In fact, it sort of has a, a, the dominant mineral here is this peach colored one, potassium feldspar. But that's not all in this building. If you go just up a little bit here, you can see we have a beautiful limestone. Um, the beds in the limestone are inclined at a high angle here. And you can even see an example of graded bedding here. This is what I would call a calc aronite, uh, a skeletal limestone that's made from little fragments of um, marine invertebrate uh, skeletons. But you can see that they were deposited in pulses here. This is a classic example of Indiana limestone, also called Salem limestone. And it's a, a choice for building stones in Washington, D.C. A lot of the um, government buildings are built out of this um, sort of regal looking limestone. If you walk along a short distance here, we can actually see some fossils close up. All right, so here, for example, right in front of my finger, there's a little thing that looks like a Cheerio, and that is a crinoid stem. All right, so that's a piece of the uh, body of an organism also called a sea lily. They sort of had a stalk and then a uh, a head with a bunch of feathery tentacles they use to filter seawater. And I saw another one over here. Let's see. Oh yeah, right here. Check this out. It looks like a little piece of net. That's an example of a fenestrate bryozoan, one of the three varieties of bryozoan morphologies. And that's again a filter feeder, but uh, this one is a colonial um, uh, animal. Not, um, not a solitary animal like the crinoid. And you can see a bunch of other stuff here, some brachiopod molds and maybe some corals as well. Um, a lot of them kind of busted up, unfortunately, just due to high energy conditions that were stripping away the finer particles from this limestone deposit. Okay, now we're gonna walk um, up 2nd Street towards the library. All right, so I've walked uh, about a block. I'm at the corner of Market Street and uh, 2nd Street. And here on the corner of a brick building, you can see a slab of slate. This is a slate from Buckingham County, just to the south of Albemarle, and that's uh, from the Arvonia Formation. The Arvonia Formation has undergone variable uh, levels of metamorphism, and this is the most lightly metamorphosed version. But this stuff is very, 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 very popular around here, both as um, signage but then also as like uh, steps and, and uh, paving stones and things like that as well. Okay, the library is right across the street. Let's go look at the columns over there. All right, so here's the main branch of the Jefferson Madison Regional Library. And these big columns here are marble. Um, you can see that they're overall whitish in color, and you can also see some stripes um, that are not quite white. Um, so this is a metamorphosed limestone, and this limestone wasn't completely pure calcite when it was deposited. There were some layers of mud in there as well, 
and then those uh, under those same metamorphic conditions that recrystallize the limestone to marble, they um, recrystallized as well. So you've got little stringers of mica-rich uh, material going through here. And depending on what angle those are sectioned at, you end up getting different patterns. So it looks like a stripe from the side. And then here you can get these uh, patterns that look more like arches, like folding, but that's not a true fold. It's a, uh, a false fold. You could say it's a faux fold, um, basically just by sectioning those planar layers at a variety of angles wrapping around this column. If you go way, way up to the top of the one all the way on the left, you can see up there that there's uh, some impurities that are sort of a, a yellowish brown color. Um, not sure what that is, but it seems to be radically different from the surrounding marble. So some impurities, uh, perhaps some sand, some mud, maybe even some metavolcanics in there. Um, the steps here are another granite, um, kind of like the one we just saw at the bank, but this one is grayer in color and has uh, a finer grain texture. This is probably a pretty good spot to see it just over here. So again, the, cor the coarseness of the crystals indicates that this magma lost its heat slowly and therefore was deep underground and um, had time to grow nice big crystals uh, during crystallization. Not sure the exact origin of these different stones. That's something I um, mean to look into. But for right now, I've documented at least three different intrusive igneous rocks. Okay, so um, we're uh, just a few feet uh, further uh, along the walking mall here and outside the entrance to the Wells Fargo ATM. And there's a different kind of granite now that's shown up below our um, Indiana limestone. And this one has great big giant feldspar uh, crystals in it, what we might call mega crysts. And these mega crysts actually show an interesting zoning, like a Rapakivi texture, where you've got um, multiple different uh, flavors of feldspar basically wrapping around a single crystal nucleus. And in some cases, there's big trains of inclusions as well, showing the crystal growth. I believe that this variety um, is like called Texas Sunset. I've seen something similar in the Hopped Gardens up outside the Smithsonian in Washington, DC. And I believe that's the trade name for this variety. Here, we've got something interesting. This is clearly a metamorphic rock because it's speckled with um, fuchsia colored garnets running through it. Um, and the actual rock type is uh, a little bit enigmatic. It may be a marble that had some um, hot fluids pulsing through it and turned into what we call a scarn, um, where there's an interaction between silica-rich fluids, usually being exuded by a magma body and a neighboring uh, body of limestone. So my guess is that this is some kind of interesting scarn deposit. Um, here's a collection here of some much darker green minerals. These might be pyroxenes and some interesting looking little uh, foldy veins running through here as well. On the very leftmost edge, we've got really big garnets. So these are the biggest garnets that we've seen so far. Here's some sandstone just next to that. So some sandstone pavers here. Um, these are basically splitting parallel to bedding for the most part. Um, looks like we've got a little bit of bedding oblique to the uh, surface of the paver right there. And then here we've got a nice example of Lisa Gang banding, these, this iron oxide staining that's soaking into uh, the porous sandstone and sort of depositing a little bit of rust at the edge of the soaking front. Here's a gorgeous looking granite gneiss. This granite gneiss here um, also has garnets in it. So we've got some fairly large, uh, round, cranberry-colored garnets, but then it's dominated by potassium feldspar, a little bit of gray quartz, and then the lines that you see are dominated by biotite mica. So this was a granite, and then that granite got squeezed during an episode of mountain building. Boy, it's hard to walk a few feet and uh, make any progress when there's all these great building stones around. So here are some other floor pavers, but these ones are slate. 
that uh, art, same Arvonia slate. Um, and one of the neat things you can see here is that each of them shows this sort of fan-like arrangement of um, little tiny topographic variations across the paver's surface. Those are plumos structure, named for its resemblance to a feather. And um, that shows the growth of a fracture. So basically, like with this one here, where they're uh, all bunched close together, that's where the fracture initiated, and then it's spread out in this direction. All right, so here's Miller's. And um, Miller's is a famous location for music in Charlottesville, but the uh, lower reaches here of the building, uh, these are more slabs of marble, not especially well kept. And you can see that the, uh, they're kind of scuffed and scratched. Um, and the, the lines of impurities here are not nearly as well defined as the marble that we saw outside the library. Huh. Oh uh, yeah. Cool. Well, I thought that this uh, lovely frog here might just be somebody's um, pottery, you know, maybe poured concrete or something like that, but the, it's actually much more exciting. If you look closely at it, you can see really nice glassy phenocrysts of quartz, and then there are also little blobs of pumice that have weathered out, making little pits in the face of the, the frog's belly and um, uh, other morphology. This is a, a tuff, an ash flow tuff, um, which is um, what you get when you have a pyroclastic flow from a volcano, and then you have a mix of gas and, and ash that goes cascading down the side of the volcano, and it lands hot. So these little blobs of pumice and particles of rock and phenocrysts, they all get welded together by the hot ash, and it becomes a pretty solid rock but this is often a, a good choice for carving because it's relatively easy to scrape away at it. All right. So this is the uh, lobby of the Omni Hotel, which is down uh, sort of anchoring one end of the, the downtown walking mall. Um, we've got a couple of different uh, rocks making up the uh, sort of checkerboard mosaic on the floor. One is a, a white marble. And then we've also got a, a black limestone, it looks like, with some nice little um, fractures running through it. Some of these fractures look pretty awesome, like right here. You've got like a series of these little hackles on the edge of a, a, a major fracture. And it looks like there they actually may have been overprinted by a stylolite. Um, a lot of the tables here show beautiful breccias. Here's a, a marble breccia, all right, where the uh, lighter colored class are you know, the calcite rich marble, and then they're being filled in here with some different material in between the clasps. There's also a um, serpentinite breccia. So let's move over this way. That's this one here with these um, greener colored blobs in it. Um, this seems to be highly fractured, um, deeply metamorphosed oceanic crust, and maybe even some of the mantle as well um, that's undergone wet metamorphism. It makes for a really beautiful uh, breccia. And then over here at the bar, it looks like there's even a different variety of green colored rock. This one doesn't have as much in the way of the uh, light colors and dark colors in the class, but it's all sort of a uniform green. Um, really a, quite a spectacular looking specimen. I'm also noticing that several of these tables have um, serpentinite that basically hasn't broken up into little chunks yet, but you can see like some of the uh, asbestiform minerals here filling a vein. And uh, here's another vein with these nice little fibers of um, uh, asbestiform minerals crossing that. Really a spectacular uh, place to learn geology. Looks like it'd be a nice place to have a drink and um, enjoy the ambiance too. Okay. Okay, so I've walked into this building um, the building called York Place. And if you look at the, the paving stones here in the center part of this um, hallway between Marco and Luca and uh, the grit, you can see that they are just huge slabs of schist. Um, schist is a metamorphic rock that uh, comes from the metamorphism of mud, uh, originally a shale, um, and then it grows lots of nice glittery mica, and that's basically uh, being deposited, or not being deposited, but being showcased here 
parallel to the floor surface. So it's kind of fun to walk over it and see all the glitteriness. There are also some huge rocks in here. This one says Dakota. And this one is labeled Missouri. I'm not really sure what the deal is with these big boulders that are in here that are so prominently labeled with state names. This one says Montana. It appears to be a quartz sandstone, maybe the Flathead Quartzite, which is a Cambrian unit that's um, found all across the uh, Rocky Mountain West. Um, but I don't really know what the deal is with these boulders. And so if anybody watching this video knows, I would be very curious to find out. Please let me know. So here's 102 Main Street. And uh, if you look up there, you can see there's some neat little tile art, but um, there's also uh, the facing stones are this very pink marble. Um, there's not much of it that's visible down at uh, ground level, but here's a couple of little slabs that um, uh, border the door here. So sort of pink calcite crystals and a little bit of mica in there as well. So again, an impure limestone that's been subject to metamorphism. <clears throat> okay, getting away from the buildings now and looking at the ground here in the middle of the downtown walking mall. So we got bricks here. But then we've got another sort of light gray colored granite. This one's a little bit coarser than the one that we saw at the library. Um, and in a few places, it's got some concentrations of mafic minerals like right here. But sort of flipping that pattern on its head is what we see here in the middle of these um, zones of that light gray marble. We've got an overall dark colored rock that has these little lines that are defined by white minerals. And these white minerals are mainly plagioclase feldspar. Um, so what these are is these are layers that accumulated within a magma chamber due to crystal settling. Um, so when a magma is crystallizing, uh, it goes from being all liquid to having a mix of solid and liquid. And the solids will either sink to the bottom of the magma chamber or they'll rise to the top if they're less dense than the magma. And usually with plage, I think it rises to the top. Okay, so this is diabase. It's from the Culpeper Basin, which is a Triassic-aged rift valley in Virginia. One of many, but the biggest one that we have in Virginia. And so this diabase actually cleans up pretty good when you uh, cut it and polish it. Okay, well, I think that's probably enough for one day. Um, there's a lot of building stones to be seen here on the Charlottesville downtown walking mall. But I uh, am out of time for today, and so I'll have to come back and do the other half of the mall in a separate episode. Hope you'll join me for that.